From pre-colonial times to the 21st century, the role and status of Nigerian women have continuously evolved as women have emerged to become leaders and influencers in different spheres. Too often the history of a nation is told through the voices and viewpoints of its men. It's time to celebrate her story, Nigeria from the perspective of women. Nigerian women are not an oppressed minority striving for relevance. They are running businesses, making laws, commanding troops, educating the nation, healing the sick, managing banks, and doing it all with style, grace, and skill. Even centuries ago, although the man was the head of the family, women had a defined role and voice. Women farmed, traded, and controlled certain occupations. And politically, women were represented through the institutions of female chiefs, age-grade associations, and market and village groups. History also has examples of those women who completely broke the mold, whose names are stuff of legend. Bilkisu Shongo of Ijebu, who many believe was the great queen of Sheba of biblical fame. Moremi of Ife, who sacrificed her son and allowed herself to be enslaved in order to steal Igbo military secrets for her people. Emotan, the simple trader who protected the life of the Oba of Benin and Inikbi of Igala, the 16th century virgin princess who gave her life to save her people from war. Another was Amina, powerful and feared queen of 16th century Zazao, now Zaria, of whom her contemporaries wrote, Amina, a woman as capable as a man. In her 34-year reign, she expanded the domain of Zazal, and the defensive walls she built around each conquered town became characteristic of Hausa city-states. British colonial rule led to the amalgamation of the country of Nigeria, named by a woman, Flora Shaw, British journalist and wife of then Governor General Lord Frederick Lugard. In this new nation, however, women held no offices nor were they allowed to vote. But many did not allow themselves to be relegated to the sidelines as mere spectators. The Aba women rioters of 1929 gave no thought to their supposedly inferior status when more than 30,000 of them from Oweri to Ibibio land marched nude against the colonial authorities to protest the imposition of unfair taxes on women. In the 1930s and 40s, the most powerful female leader was Madame Alimotu Pelewura, an illiterate Muslim fish trader and head of the Lagos Market Women's Association for 50 years. Pelewura's mobilizing skills made her a valuable asset to politicians such as Herbert Macaulay, but colonial authorities complained about the influence that Pelewura and her market women wielded over local economic and political affairs. When she died in 1951, 25,000 people attended her burial. With the expansion of party politics in this period, women became increasingly active, some being the wives of party leaders. But it took until 1953 for women to gain seats in the House of Chiefs. One of these women was Fumilaya Ransom Kuti, who fought for equal rights long before the women's lib movement in the United States. Famously the first woman in Nigeria to drive a car, Ransom Kuti led women in an anti-taxation protest in 1949, which led to the temporary abdication of the Alake of Egbaland. She was also a delegate in the pre-independence conferences in the UK. Another was Margaret Ekpo, both a successful grassroots leader from her base in Abba 
and an influential nationalist politician. A vigorous campaigner for the economic and political rights of women, it was largely to her efforts that women voters outnumbered men in 1955. In 1960, she won election into the Eastern House of Assembly. The third, Janet Mukelu, was also elected into the Eastern House of Assembly and later became Nigeria's first female commissioner. Southern Nigerian women received the right to vote in the 1950s, but in the North, they had to wait until the late 1970s. Mrs. Wuraola Esong was the first woman elected to the Federal House of Representatives in 1960. And in 1983, a lady called Franca Afebua of Old Bendel State made history as the first female senator. Women have not held many political appointments since independence, but this does not diminish their significant contribution as activists, strategists, mobilizers, financiers, administrators, and of course, voters. Hajia Gambo Sawaba never held any office, but she was a political powerhouse and one of the earliest members of the Northern Elements Progressive Union Party, NEPU. Given the masculine name Sawaba, the Redeemer, for her boldness to speak even when the men shied away, she was jailed more than a dozen times, but continued her committed campaign for the political and economic emancipation of Northern women. Her spirit probably inspired women such as politician and rights crusader Najatu Mohammed and the late Hajia Leila Dogonyaru, who despite her own limited schooling, became a leading advocate for girl-child education, women's rights and political participation of Northern women. Priscilla Kuye was a lawyer, not a politician, when as the first and only female president of the Nigerian Bar Association in 1992, she courageously led her organization to speak out against the excesses of the military government. Kudira Tabiola occupied no political office when her activism made her an eventual victim of assassin's bullets in 1996. Not just because she was fighting for the release of her husband, Moshuda Biola, but because she fought for the fundamental rights of all Nigerians to elect their government. The limited access of women to education makes the achievements of women such as Orea Lua Green, the first African female pharmacist who qualified in 1919, and Lady Kofo Ademola, the first black woman to graduate from Oxford University in 1935, all the more remarkable. They opened doors for other record-breaking professionals, such as Toying Olakuri, the first female chartered accountant in 1963. Grace Alele Williams, who rose to become the first female vice-chancellor of a Nigerian university, Benin, in 1985, and Funke Oshibodu, who has been managing director of three banks, MBC International, Echo Bank, and Union Bank. In the armed forces, the Nigerian Defense Academy opened up its doors to the first cohort of female cadets, popularly known as President Jonathan's Queens, just last year. But they have impressive role models in retired Major General Aderonke Kale, the first two-star general in the Nigerian Army, and Itunu Hotonu, the first woman to attain the exalted rank of Rear Admiral in the Nigerian Navy in 2010. Back in 1935, when Stella Jane Thomas became the first woman lawyer, she might have been surprised to hear that in 1981, Folake Sholanke would become the first female senior advocate of Nigeria. And just two decades on, Justice Mariam Aloma Mukta also the first northern female lawyer and the first woman on the supreme court would become chief justice of nigeria in the world of business there are women who have attained uncommon success 
Omuokwe, crowned Queen of Osomari in present Delta State in 1935, started as a food trader along the Niger, raised enough capital to launch an independent palm oil trading business, then began importing goods from England. There were early industrialists, like Madame Bisoye Tejosho, who made money as a successful UAC agent and real estate investor in the 1950s, then established Teju Industries, a foam manufacturing plant in 1970. Other bold businesswomen include Stella Okoli, who grew a small retail chemist shop into a multi-billion naira pharmaceuticals empire. Florence Seriki, whose Omatech Computers remains the only publicly quoted computer company on the Nigerian Stock Exchange. And Folora Alakija, who added oil prospecting to her already successful background in fashion design and promotional printing with the Rose of Sharon Group. Her business acumen has served her well as Executive Vice Chairman of FAMFA Oil, which was granted its license in 1993. And in 2012, Mrs. Alakija emerged as Africa's richest woman, according to Forbes magazine. In the arena of public service, Chief Adenike Oyabola and Janet Akinriade became the first female ministers in 1979 in Sheu Shagari's cabinet, while Mrs. Francesca Emanuel was the first female federal permanent secretary heading nine federal ministries between 1975 and 1988. These trailblazers were the predecessors of many women who have shone in public service. From the first female head of service, Ebele Okeke, to Hajia Halima Ahmed, the first female secretary general of the ECOWAS parliament, and those that have excelled in traditionally male roles, Kema Chikwe, as Minister of Transport and Aviation, and Princess Stella Odua, the current Aviation Minister who is skillfully transforming the sector. Ngozio Konjoiwela, as the first two-time Minister of Finance and Minister of Foreign Affairs. Dezani Alison Madweke, as Minister of Petroleum. Ifweko Omogwi Okauru, as Chairman Federal Inland Revenue Service. And Professor Joy Ogu, as Nigeria's permanent representative and ambassador to the United Nations. Of course, the key agency charged with championing women's issues within the government is the Ministry of Women Affairs and Social Development, currently headed by gender relations expert and renowned women activist, Hajia Zainab Mena, former president of the National Council for Women Societies. In the National Assembly, Female legislators, though still underrepresented, with just nine in the Senate and 32 in the House of Reps, have made their voices very much heard, holding leadership positions, proposing bills, and working effectively on behalf of their constituents. The highest ranking female so far has been Right Honorable Patricia Ete, the first woman speaker of the House of Reps. In terms of executive office, Dame Virgie Etiaba is the only woman to have experienced a turn as governor from November 2006 to February 2007. But more women are following the bold lead of Sarah Jibril, the first female presidential aspirant. One day soon, this particular glass ceiling will open to the undoubted delight of women all over Nigeria and the African diaspora. Critical to any discussion of the history of women is the unique role of the First Lady, a position that has added immeasurably to the socio-economic and political growth of the Nigerian woman. From late Miss Mariam Babangida's Better Life for Rural Women program to Dame Patience Jonathan's Women for Change, the First Lady can have significant national and international impact. Dame Jonathan has become a major force for women's empowerment and a relentless champion for the greater representation of women in government. It is thanks largely to her that President Goodluck Jonathan now heads an administration with 35% women representation 
even higher than international benchmarks. Dame Jonathan is also the current president of the African First Ladies Peace Mission, with the key focus of promoting peace and initiating projects to better the lives of African women. In her various duties, the First Lady is well supported by her very able lieutenant, Hajia Amina Namadi Sambu, wife of the Vice President. Women have also been pace setters in the flourishing creative industries, enriching our lives and enhancing the image of the nation with their diverse talents. Flora Wakwa's 1966 novel, Ifuru, became the first English book published by an African female writer, making her the forerunner of such internationally acclaimed and award-winning authors such as Buchi Emecheta, Sefiata, and Chimamanda Adichie. Ladi Kwali elevated the art of pottery, staging international pottery exhibitions and receiving an MBE from Queen Elizabeth in 1963. Following closely are talents like globally renowned sculptor Sukari Douglas Camp, also honored by Her Majesty in 2005. In the dramatic arts, the works of pioneers such as actress Taiwo Ajayi Lyset, screen legend Joke Silva, and foremost producer Amaka Igwe have captivated audiences, while inspiring women like Genevieve Naji, Omotola Jalade Kende, and Stephanie Okereke, the shining stars of the global phenomenon called Nollywood. Our female music stars have thrilled us with their talents, from the elegant stallion Onyeka Onwenu to the late great Lady of Songs Chrissy Essia Nibukwe and more recent superstars such as Asha taking our music far beyond these shores. In the fashion industry, the contributions of pioneers such as Oprah Benson, Princess Abba Folawiyo and Folake Majin helped make it possible for the likes of Deola Sego and Lisa Folawio to now showcase their designs on the runways of Paris, New York and London. The outstanding performance of Nigerian women in sports includes the legendary Choma Ajumwa, the first Nigerian to win an Olympic gold medal at the 1996 Atlanta Olympics. International track star Mary Onyali and footballing great Mercy Akide how many men have scored 49 goals in two seasons? And of course, we all remember the night of the 16th of November 2001 when a young gangly girl from River State, Agbani Darego, became the first Nigerian, indeed the first black woman, to win the most coveted title of Miss World. A country cannot develop unless it recognizes and celebrates the contribution of women to its economy, society, and government. The Yoruba traditional title of Erelu is conferred on a woman who represents the interests of women before the king. History shows that there have been many Erelus who have struggled, sacrificed, and fought for greater opportunities, not only for themselves, but for future generations. Some of these women we know by name and reputation because they were in the spotlight. Others are unsung heroines, known only to those whose lives they touched. To all we say thank you. To all we say well fought. To all we say well done. Nigeria, it is time to stand up and give honor to whom honor is due. It is time to celebrate your women. <laughs>